Hey, what's going on guys? It's Devin here with another vlog for you. And in today's vlog, prepare yourselves to get down and nerdy. <laughs> get it? Because I'm down and nerdy instead of down and, and dirty and I made a joke and... <clears throat> anyway, in today's vlog I'm going to showcase my nerdy collection to you guys. My helmets, my fig pins, my die-cast figures, my non-die-cast figures. It's going to be awesome. So, this will be your chance or your cue for that matter, to go get some snacks, go to the bathroom, I'll wait. <laughs> okay, that'll be enough time. Now that you've gone to the bathroom and gotten your snacks, let's get this party started. Alright, so on our first shelf here, we have our Banpresto Dragon Ball Z figures. Now, some of, most of these are put together. Some of them come on a stand, and some of them don't come on a stand. So we'll start with this one. Some of these I can't pick up because that's like picking up a new batch of Legos that will fall apart. So the ones I won't pick up, I'll just show and zoom in with the camera. So this one, obviously, is Battle Damaged Super Saiyan Blue Goku and Vegeta from the Broly movie. Goku's about to fire the Kamehameha there, and Vegeta's about to fire the Gallic Gun. Now, if you guys want Ben Presto figures, they are a great purchase. They do an awesome job. And now we have this Vachita figure here. Original Vachita, probably from him battling Goku or some other part of the saga. And then we have Super Saiyan Future Trunks back there. There's the Capsule Corp logo. I can pick him up really fast. Or move him around. With the sword and all. The sword does come out. And now here we have 100% Full Powered Frieza, one of my favorite Dragon Ball Z villains if not one of the best villains of all time. And now, uh, as you can see, they do a great job with their figures. They got everything down from the purple, to the scars, to the cut-off tail, to the veins in his legs, and everywhere else over his body. It's pretty cool. If you guys have any questions about Ben Presto figures, leave a question down in the comments section of the video below, and I will answer when I can. This is a really cool one. This is a Goku one. Super Saiyan, obviously, if you couldn't tell by the yellow hue of the coloring. Now, this one behind him, I'm not going to pick up, because the moment I pick him up, he falls apart. So this is Super Saiyan Blue, Gochita, not to be confused with Super Saiyan Blue, Goku and Vegeta, and Super Saiyan Blue, Vegeta. Now, Gochita, for those of you who don't know, is the fusion dance fusion of Goku and Vegeta. And the fusion only lasts for five minutes. Which is kind of stinks, but it gets the job done sometimes. And here we have Super Saiyan Blue Vegito, and this is the Batara Ring Fusion of Goku and Vegeta. And the Batara Fusion lasts forever. Technically, it's supposed to. So, as you can see, Vegito is the Vegeta side of Goku and Vegeta, because he has the Vegeta boots and gloves. But still has the classic Goku red and red, or orange and blue gi. And then Gochita is more of the Goku dominant side of the fusion. And over here we have uh, this is pretty much what would be considered as what firing a Kamehameha would be like in real life if it was directly at you. So this is a really cool figure, and these are just pieces of um, aluminum plastic, and this just you know they just stick in, and then it looks like the Kamehameha is actually being fired at you, which is kind of neat. Now here we have a uh, soup no, uh, excuse me, Ultra Instinct Goku. Battle damaged and scarred, obviously. Those ones I'll show you from the other side. Alright, now we'll move around here. Alright, and here we have Super Saiyan God, Super Saiyan Goku and Vegeta. As different than Super Saiyan Blue, Goku and Vegeta over there. And uh, see the details are pretty cool. The camera's probably not picking this up, but it's got, it's pretty awesome. And this is another Gochita. This one's a bit more stable, but I won't pick him up. He'll fall apart. And then down here we have Broly. And for those of you who don't know, the Dragon Ball Z, or Dragon Ball Super, then Presto figures, either or, were commissioned by Toriyama himself, the creator of Dragon Ball. Dragon Ball Z and Dragon Ball Super. So this, this one, those two... And that one, and a few others, were crafted for the Dragon Ball Z Super Broly movie. 
which was made two years ago. Okay, now we'll kind of move around here. And we'll go down here. And here we have uh, my collection of Pokemon Gold Foil cards. Now, those of you who don't remember when Pokemon the Movie 2000 came out in the year 2000, Burger King was releasing all of these in... Not Happy Meals, I can't remember what Burger King called their Happy Meals. Or their, their equivalent. But anyway, these are all 23 karat plated gold. They're still on the original casings, so we have Togepi, Mewtwo, Jigglypuff... Charizard and Poliwhirl and Pikachu back there, if you can see that. And then here's a couple odds and ends. Some Zoid model kits from the anime Zoids, if any of you saw that. Some Transformers. Here's some Halo pieces I got as a uh, GameStop rewards. Spending my rewards points to get these. Here's another cool Dragon Ball Z thing. It is a crystal ball of the four-star Dragon Ball. See, there's the four stars. And as every Dragon Ball Z fan knows, the four-star Dragon Ball was Grandpa Gohan's Dragon Ball. And then we got some more model kits there. Some stuff back there. Oh, this is an excellent piece. This I got at Comic-Con about two years ago. This was the Dark Magician from Yu-Gi-Oh! And this is really, really well put together. He just sits on that stand there. I think it's kind of cool. And then we have some um, figures from Mobile Suit, the Mobile Suit Gundam series, or uh, mostly it's from Mobile Suit Gundam Wing and G Gundam. So we'll go around here and show you guys some cool stuff. And then up here, we have my diecast. Power Ranger figures. We'll start with this one over here. This is obviously for any Power Ranger fans. This is the White Tiger Zord in Warrior Mode, and it, most of it has die-cast pieces. And then this is the Legacy Thunder Megazord. And this was from Season 2 of Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. And as those of you know, uh, to make the Megazord, it causes the Griffin, the Unicorn, the Lion, the Firebird, and the Red Dragon Thunder Sword, and they all make the Megazord. And over here we have one of my favorites, the Dragon Zord in Fighting Mode. This combines the Dino Megazord with Dragon Zord. Get you a good view on that. And then uh, I, w I didn't have room to put his tail staff up with him, so he's just sitting there. Here's a cool figure of the Green Ranger. And this uh, Megazord is from Power Rangers Dino Thunder, I believe. And then we'll move over here a little bit. I'll go up here, and these are my collection of helmets. These are the Power Ranger Legacy helmets. The ones that can actually fit your head, but I don't wear them, so I just had them sign. This one hasn't been signed yet, but this is the Power Rangers Legacy White Ranger helmet. It's got the clips there to take it off. And then this one is cool because I got this signed by the Green Ranger himself, Jason David Frank. About two years ago at Comic-Con. So there it is. And then this one I'll have to pull out. So pull these out. And if, for those of you who don't know, these are fig pins. Fig pins are like the new Funko Pops. They're just pins that you collect. So here's a pin of Goku and Broly, and then um, when I had gotten the deluxe version of Dragon Ball Z Kakarot, I got this fig pin set for free, so this is kind of cool, so we'll zoom in here. Great Ape Vegeta, Frieza, Spirit Goku raising his hands for the Spirit Bomb, Kid Buu, and Cell. And back here we have my Red Ranger helmet, which was signed by both original Red Rangers, Steve Cardenas, who played Rocky, and Austin St. John, who played Jason. Now we'll move over here to my collection over here. 
And this is my Power Ranger wall here. These are the kind of memorabilia that I've collected for years. I spent, since I was a kid, collecting all these. So here we have two Legacy Morphers with the uh, Tyrannosaurus Power Coin in it and the Dragonzor Power Coin in it. And for those of you who remember these back in the day, these were the Power Ranger flip-up Morphing Rangers. The Automorphin Rangers. So that button right there, you press that button and then he would morph from that into something else. And these are my autographs. That's from Jason David Frank, the Green Ranger, and many other colors. That's from Austin St. John. I don't know if you guys can see that very well. Amy Jo. Paul Schreier and Jason Narvi, Balkan Skull. And that's uh, Jason Fawn from Power Rangers Time Force. And on this top shelf, we have, uh, in that box back there, is the Legacy Zeonizer. And that was the, the morphers that they used in Power Rangers Zeo. And then we have the Power Blasters that they used in MMPR, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. And then there's another Jason David Frank autograph back there, signed. There's a Power Coin set. And then there's a Funko Pop I got Jason to sign. And then... That's an officially signed badge by Michael Copon, who played the blue Time Force Ranger on Power Rangers Time Force. And this staff was signed by Austin St. John, who, who reprived his role, or reprised his role, in Power Rangers Zeo and became the Gold Ranger. So that is that collection there. And on this wall, we have a lot of, uh, oh, don't mind this stuff, I drink that occasionally. This book here, I had signed. This is the entire ultimate history of the Power Rangers. Every season, broken down to Super Mega Force. So, you see that was signed by Austin St. John. And it's signed inside from a few other people, but I'm not going to show you all that. And then my lightsaber and keyblade collection over here. This is the Oblivion Keyblade from Kingdom Hearts 2. It's got a firm foam grip. And it is all a or metal alloy of some kind. And then uh, this is the Oathkeeper Keyblade. Another one from Kingdom Hearts. Kind of cool. And of course, we can't forget my lightsaber collection. Now these I had gotten, oh gosh, about five or six years ago. But they're in really bad shape, if you can't really tell. Some of the pieces are broken on the inside, so it won't light up very well. But I'll light it up for you if you wish. This is Obi-Wan Kenobi's lightsaber from uh, A New Hope. There you go. And then we'll move on to the next one. This is Darth Vader's lightsaber from the original Star Wars series. See if I can get it to light up pretty well for you guys. There we go. Authentic sounds. And then this lightsaber I picked up online. It was from a website called Kyber. A lot of you who are Star Wars fans know Kyber sabers are well built and well made. Now this one is a dueling lightsaber, so it's a lot more lightweight than these two here. So we'll turn it on. The cool thing is this one changes colors, but I'm not going to change colors for you guys unless you really want to see it. I'll do another video about these. Then you just hold it. And it powers off. Alright, then we move over here. These are just maps from various Elder Scrolls games I've collected that I post on the wall. Obviously. Uh, this is the province of High Rock. And then this is all of Tamriel here. High Rock, Hammerfell, Somerset Isle, Valenwood, Elsewhere, Black Marsh, Morrowind, Cillardale, Skyrim. Then I have several, you know, smaller maps. There's uh, Vardenfell and Morrowind. There's the province of Cyrodiil, and there's Skyrim. Now over here, a friend of mine made this for me because she knows I'm a huge Pennsylvania fan. So she, made, she painted this for me. 
by hand, which is kind of cool, so. I'll pick that up later. <clears throat> so anyway, over here we have what these are called wall tapestries. And you just like pin them up or hang them up and they could just come down like a scroll. They're wall scrolls. So that's a Ocarina of Time wall scroll there. We'll go around here. This one's kind of cool. This is a Goku wall scroll. So you can see all the small pictures make up Goku holding his fist, which is kind of cool. You can't really see the whole thing, but kind of like that. And over here, I have my collection of Lord of the Rings swords. This, these are real replicas, and they were made at the Weta Workshop in New Zealand, where the films were filmed. So over here, we have Sting. Let me see if I can get back here to show you guys what it looks like. This is Sting. These are all made of stainless steel. And they're all... Very workable, as you can see. Look at the details. It says The Hobbit on there. The only, the only sharp part of the sword is the tip, so you gotta be careful with that. Otherwise, it shows all the cool... This is the... And just so everyone knows, these are real blades. These are stainless steel blades. We'll hang you back up where you belong. I'm not going to take Orcus down, but this is uh, Orcus from the Hobbit series. The, so the sword that Thorin Oakenshield carries. See, there it is, Orcus and Elvish. And Orcus, as everyone knows, was called the Goblin Cleaver. So that's kind of cool. And over here I have my Pittsburgh Steelers flag. I'm a big, uh, like I said before, I'm a big sports fan. I'm a Pennsylvania guy. So the Steelers are my team. Feel free to comment uh, your NFL team or favorite sports team in the comments below. We'd love to hear from you. And this is really cool. I got this online a, a couple years ago. And this is... Um, I'm a big martial artist in my spare time when I had the time. So... And my former martial arts master, who has since passed away, always had me recite these... Every morning. Or every day when you wake up, you recite these. And I thought it was kind of cool because it was Super Saiyan Damaged Goku, but it had all the cool Virtues of a Warrior stuff on the, on the side, so I thought that was kind of neat. And over here, we have my Lego collection. This castle was one of the first Legos I ever built myself. By myself, I should say. And then here... This little guy I built with spare Lego pieces. I just got bored one day and said, oh, what the heck? Why don't I just build something cool? So that I built. And then a couple of these were from a friend of mine who moved away and he had to give his Lego collection up. So, And that castle was one of them. And this is the next castle. This castle was actually one that I built a few years ago. Kind of neat. And then, this one took a long-ass time to build, but this is the Lego Tantive IV from Star Wars. As you can tell, the heaviest part of the Lego is the back piece, because that's where all the weight is. And then down here, we have my Bionicle collection. So we got all sorts of Bionicles. We have the original ones in the back there, if you can see, and the newer ones in the front. And then I have my Lord of the Rings Lego collections over here. So I have a... Uh, it's kind of blurry. I don't know if it'll focus. There it goes. You can see that very well. And then down below here, we got some Harry Potter ones. And some more Star Wars down there. So other than that, guys, I think that concludes the tour. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed the vlog. If you enjoyed this video, like, subscribe, and we'll see you guys in the next vlog. Take it easy.